I will quote, I will quote my favourite sailing saying at you. What's that? Any fool can go out in a, way, in a storm. A wise sailor knows when to stay in. That is true. So hopefully we're being wise sailors. So how's our uh, windless service going, Bev? Um, the service is actually going well, but we've discovered things we didn't want to discover. Um, whoever put these things in has not protected the bolts. It looks like there's been galvanic corrosion and some of the aluminium casings worn away. It's just a bad installation. But uh, also... Oh, for... after our test sale um, and uh, we're looking at the coolant and uh, as we expected uh, the coolant has uh, gone down significantly um, that's to be expected because we expected air holes to be in the system so we're filling that up um, also uh, our fan belt is um, moving too much um, a the correct tightness for a fan belt is sort of like you just depress it and it's like the what a centimeter because it's basically the width of your finger um, that's how much you can depress it but I can depress it a lot more than that and it's clear to me that we just obviously haven't put the fan belt on correctly so how's your depression it's a bit less depressing <laughs> um, but I do think that this is the one area that maybe a little bit of more brute force <laughs> would have helped because uh, Beverly and I really struggled um, to um, pull make pull the alternator out um, but we did it a bit of a science rather than uh, the appliance of science rather than the appliance of brute force. I see. If if, if force was measured in girl in, in girl power rather than horse power, it would be a two girl power job. Oh, it was definitely a two girl power job. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. reading uh, gusts of uh, 20 knots here and um, because I am rusty I've decided to turn off the engine um, and just wait basically what happens is uh, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon and um, usually you have the gustiest part of the day is about between one o'clock and three o'clock purely because the Sun is bumping in energy into the um, atmosphere and uh, one of the ways that it comes out is in wind so what we're going to do is just wait hopefully there'll be an evening lull which is quite common around here and uh, we'll go out for that and just go out for an evening sail that's the plan personally i understand your position personally because we're both rusty yeah. And you haven't done this for some time, and you have manoeuvred in worse conditions than this. But oh, we, but we are rusty. Manoeuvred in a. I would rather. You, tighter I would though. rather you felt comfortable just manoeuvring in less of a crosswind. Yeah, because we've got. Just to get back in the groove. Exactly, and and um, we're under no pressure. I know we like to produce videos for you because, you know, that's part of what we do. But at the end of the day we've got to feel comfortable with what we're doing and um, I know for myself I'm a wee bit rusty and I, I'm just going to wait for a little bit of the evening lull. I just think it's wiser. Uh, it's basically better. Well we can get the kettle on for coffee. Oh absolutely. Yeah. Why have I been ejected from my comfy chair? Why are you sitting in my, my chair? Uh, well we've got the uh, chart plotter 
um, just behind me um, because uh, while we're having our cup of tea, uh, we're just watching the chart chapter. Um, but the other thing is, Beverly and I were just discussing how I'm going to go out. And, um, you know, there's basically, we're going to let the wind um, dictate to a certain extent how I'm actually going to make that initial manoeuvre. So that if the um, boat, uh, I'm going to aim for going up the alley. Um, that's my aim. Um, so I'm going to actually aim to go into the crosswind backwards. Are you trying to say you're going to try and reverse the boat out of the slip? Into... I'm going to, going to reverse the boat out of the slip into the crosswind. That's my plan. So you're going to have the wind on your stern? I'm going to have the wind on the stern. Right. Um, because some people are just going to experiment. So I might have to get the cameras up. <laughs> um, because some people were saying, because um, there's no rudder underneath the... Um, uh, knows it's a little bit more temperamental as to where it goes so <laughs> that's what we're gonna do and we'll just see if it actually works i noticed the wind behind you has um, dropped the six knots occasionally exactly and this is what we mean about the uh crosswind it just is starting to die down and it's only been half an hour um and um i think this will be a much better time but what we're going to do is we weren't going to film going out but i think we will do this time because just see if our, our experiment works. <laughs> you can do it you like. I haven't got to finish my cup of tea. Oh, absolutely, girl. Okay, give me a few seconds just to undo this. Okay, I am now almost ready. Right, we're free. Fifty-five seconds. It just says 0 0.5. Oh, that's not nautical miles. Um, three minutes. You're right. We haven't got much time. Right. Shall we do the tack and talk about it afterwards? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So, um, I, I really don't want to be hitting that tree truck over there. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to take. No, hitting large commercial traffic is not advised. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay, Dickie. <laughs> so, ready to tack? Ready. Okay, tagging! <laughs> oh god, no, definitely not advised to hit big sea trucks. Try and stay off the big blue boat, yeah. We practically uh, stalled there. I did, didn't it? You did a very good heap too. I don't think you were meaning to do a heap too, but you did a very good one. Right, there we go, we're off. else but avoiding commercial traffic at the moment <laughs> we've um, we've uh, avoided at least four or five trucks <gasps> sorry not trucks um, sea trucks sea trucks so uh, and the still a super fast passenger liner has just gone past yeah but can you believe it i've actually seen my second plane as well hey whoa you know things are definitely opening up again 737 this time yeah 737 so brilliant well, um, I think 
think Beverly and I can be um, quite happy with this little sale. Well, obviously, we haven't caught everything on camera, but um, we've done a jibe, we've done a few tacks. Did a heave to? Did a heave to. We've basically carried out what we call our basic standard manoeuvres. We put reefs in and shook them out again. Yeah, we've put reefs in, shook them out. We didn't we... operate the topping lift this time. No, we did not operate the topping lift this time. Um, the biggest mistake that I made was I turned off the ignition uh, before I pulled out the stopper. That was my biggest mistake. Um, but I was quickly <laughs> from the ignition to the correct lever. We're going to find out in about five minutes whether that's been a problem. Yeah, and we're going to find out whether that's been a problem. Hopefully it's not. But you know there's a few mistakes and the other thing is i was like my speed log is not working and beverly said well it would help if we actually put it in <laughs> yeah so i'm sitting in the uh sitting in the um floor of the bilge for six months it has we um again it's just something that um, if you know you're not going to be sailing um you know we've taken it out and we haven't put it back in so no wonder my speed logger doesn't do anything. <laughs> There's something really good about the annual um, chain inspection. I think it's purely because it kind of like really means that you're going to be going off and going at anchor and things like that. But one of the things I wanted to um, bring uh, up was uh, we've got a swivel on our um, anchor chain and Beverly and I are still in debate about the usefulness of anchor, uh, an anchor swivel so I just thought we'd like um, your ideas I'm, I'm of the idea that I think it's two years old now that swivel it is two years old we put it on about two years ago I think if it gets to year three we just throw it in the bin anyway maybe but anyway I'm just asking of you was their opinion and, of... then, and then we'll decide whether to put a new swivel on yeah but if I can get people's opinions I wouldn't mind um, but um, yeah, it's just um, inspecting the chain. I'm going to put some extra um, colour codes in, um, just purely because I've, I've bought some extra ones, because basically we've only got one set of colour codes, and sometimes you just miss them. So we're doing that. And um, I think that's really about it on the uh, anchor chain, but it just feels good that I'm actually inspecting it. Well, we haven't put these bolts in. Obviously, you didn't put a a jointing compound on them and they are so stiff I can barely move them. Um, this is supposed to be a simple job where you just undo a bolt, undo another one, swivel the chain stripper and then put it all back together again but these are going to have to come out, be thoroughly cleaned and then be duralacked and reinserted. Yeah. So I'm having to use, <laughs> I just don't have the strength to push it round but if I apply constant pressure with my foot that seems to work. So. I'm just applying gentle, constant pressure with my foot because my legs stronger than my arm is that simple. So how's the um, windlass installation going? Oh god. Well, the maintenance is going well in as much as we've got all the bits apart. The maintenance is going badly in as much as we find significant corrosion. It looks to me like um, these bolts were not properly corrosion protected before they were put in and they have caused galvanic corrosion of the aluminium casing. We're hoping it's not too bad. Uh, the biggest problem though is the fact that this is the first time we've ever serviced our windlass. Yeah, well we kept an eye on it, we scrubbed it and kept it clean and we thought we were all right, but obviously we weren't. So, no from our mistake. Um, so all this falling off is probably aluminium dust. And um, it just needs a good scrub out with a wire brush. It needs dura lacking, it needs put back in. The, um, this doesn't look too bad um, I thought there was a score there but I think it's actually a um, I think it's a mark I think it's where they press something together you know a manufacturing thing uh, but this will need scrubbing out with scotch bright pad and then it'll need greasing and putting back and this side here as you can see is covered in salt how the hell the darn thing worked I've got no idea but we've got to get on with it. Is it looking? Um, 
lot better. Um, I'm fairly convinced that our um, wind this is the worst for wear, um, but we've done what we can for it and we'll see how it goes. It's certainly less stuff on it than it had a few minutes ago, so we're hoping for the best. Yeah, I think it's the fact that we haven't serviced it ever, so... If I'd known it was this bad, I'd have got off my ass a lot earlier, but, you know. Yeah. It is what it is, and sometimes you learn the hard way. The wheel there on the thing has got a bit of pitting on it which is never a good sign but we've cleaned it up as best we can and we're stuffing it full of teflon teflon lubricant yeah so we're just putting um teflon on and um greasing it as best as you can yeah well it's clear that we should have done our windless service a lot earlier than uh, three years in to sailing but there you go um all we've done on the chain is um we've got some cold galvanic spray and um, we've just sort of sprayed that on to the chain just to protect it on one area where uh, it was just starting to show little bits of rust and things we've also sprayed a little bit of the anchor just because that was looking a bit dodgy well the previous owners had um, protected it with paint and silicon and filler yeah which wasn't really working it wasn't working so we've put the uh, cold galvanic spray on but um, at least we've done it now and um, whatever it is, it's not not perfect by any long chalk, but whatever we've got, it's definitely a lot better than it was. <laughs>